in the epistle for the Easter, some carnal desires, which war against the soul, having your conversation good among the Gentiles, but whereas they speak against you as evildoers, to every human creature for God's sake, whether it be to the king is excelling or the governor is a sin, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free and not as making liberty a cloak for malice, but as the servants of God, <clears throat> honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king, servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy Christ Jesus our Lord. And then the gospel, <clears throat> take from that according to St. John, chapter 16. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and now you shall not see me, and again a little while you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said one to another, What is this that he saith to us? A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while you shall see me, and because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he saith a little while? We know not what he speaketh. And Jesus knew that they had a mind to ask him, and he said to them, Of this do you inquire among yourselves, because I said, A little while and you shall not see me, and again a little while and you shall see me. And many men I say to you, that you shall lament and weep, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be made sorrowful, and your sorrow shall be turned into joy. The woman when she is in labor hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But when she hath brought forth a child, she remaineth no more, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. So also you now indeed have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man shall take from you. Thus are the words of today's holy gospel. So then, so then, this third Sunday after Easter, this duration is a little while, to the Saint Leo, Saint Leo the Great. A little while you shall see me, a little while you shall not see me, because I go to the Father. And Saint Leo the Great says, this little while is the whole time from Ascension Thursday all the way until the Day of Judgment. Christ gives us a faith, he goes away for a little while, modicum, a little while. Then he comes back. Our schedule, we think it's a very long time, but it's not, it's just a little while. And why is he not with us? Because he goes to the Father. When he comes back from the Father, he shall come back with power and majesty. He's going to come back to collect his own. Those that remain faithful to him, he's going to collect and take and do a gather into his barn. And those that have been his enemies, they shall be cast into the exterior darkness. But we are reminded that it is a little while. What is this little while that he goes to the Father? We read also in the sacred scripture today from the book of Apocalypse. We begin to read the book of Apocalypse, which is by the moderns called the book of Revelation, the final book of the Bible, the book of Apocalypse. In this book, St. John has a vision from the angel who holds the seven seals and stands with seven spirits that are before God. And he writes, to, says St. John, write these words to the seven churches. And there are seven churches that are represent the seven ages of the church. And at the end of the world, God is going to come back and judge all the seven ages. Just like in, uh, he comes back to judge kings, and he judges them as kings. And then he will judge peasants and judge them as peasants. And then he will judge the, the, the carpenters as carpenters, priests as priests, bishops as bishops, sisters and nuns as sisters and nuns. He shall have many judgments that are going to happen at the same time. Christ is going to come and judge. And when he judges, he shall judge each according to their position and state. Well, we shall also be judged according to our place in the history of the church. So there will be seven judgments. Judgments for each of the seven ages. The saints of each age will be different from the saints of the other ages. And that we are, we are given certain strengths and weaknesses. We have certain sins that are more prevalent in one age than another. And right now we are in the fifth age. 
which is found in the book of Apocalypse, chapter 3, where God says to St. John, write this to the, to the church of Sardis. The church of Sardis, the fifth church. Philadelphia, the sixth church. Laodicea, the seventh church. And the church of Sardis, I have this to say about you. You have the name of being alive, but you are dead. This is the great evil of our church. This is the church of the last 500 years. It will pass over and be called a new name in the seventh age, the sixth age, where the church of Philadelphia, and then we arrive at the church of Philadelphia, it says that they will have faithful members of that church, the church of Philadelphia. And then in that church there shall be pillars, and these pillars shall wear white garments, and they shall be strong. But in the church of Philadelphia, they will be, will be faithful. But in the time of the church of Philadelphia, there will be risen up a synagogue of Satan. And they shall call themselves Jews, but they shall not be Jews. They shall lie. So that the church of, 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 of the sixth age, fifth age, is our church of Sardis. It will have those that call themselves good have the name of being good, but they are dead. This dead church shall transform in the sixth age to the synagogue of Satan. Those who say they belong to the true church, but are in fact are liars. Many of these we call now the conservatives and the traditionalists in the Catholic Church. They have the name of truth. They hold the truth. They believe in the truth, or at least they claim they do. And they know all about the gospel, and they know all about what's required, but their works are dead. This is part of the great evil of the last 500 years. The great heresy of Protestantism is the belief that there can be faith without works. And this idea that there can be faith without works is deep inside the Catholic Church and Catholic heart today. As long as I hold the true faith, especially when we see the world around us, that there are many liars there are many people who do not even believe in the truth of faith. Therefore, we believe that if I hold on to the truth, I've done enough. But we must hold on to the truth, and it must be translated into our works. And the problem with the church of Sardis is that this doesn't happen. It's the sin of our age. We're in the age in which everyone is good people. Everybody is good. Everybody is righteous. Everybody is just. But they do not the works of goodness, righteousness, and justice. We say we know the truth, but the truth does not come out in our actions. Hence, the angel says to the church of Sardis, You have the name of being alive, but I know you, you are dead. And I will come to you as a thief in the night, and the time which you know not shall be the day of your judgment. We're in an age now where we're going to live a little bit longer. Everything's going to happen bad a little bit later. And everything's going to be fine. But this is a lie. We are in the age of the wicked church of Sardis. In this church, what is required? To pay attention to what you have heard and what you have received. Is what the angel tells St. John. Pay attention to what you have heard and what you have received. And put what you have heard and what you have received into action. We have to recognize that the answer to all the troubles in the wicked world around us equals the true faith, the true gospel, and we have heard it and we have received it. Now we have to go out and put that holy gospel into practice. There must be works backing up our belief. Right now, everyone is tempted to prepare for the time of crisis only by preparing themselves. But we are members of the mystical body of Christ. We are part of the army of Christ, and the army of Christ is there to defend the little ones, is there to spread the faith of our Master. And why is the Father not, why is the Lord Jesus Christ not visible to us during this little while all the time? And he says, the Lord says, I will not be with you for a little while because I go to the Father. And what is he doing when he goes to the Father? When the Lord Jesus Christ goes to the Father, he's taking on food. He's taking on sustenance, he's taking on strength and in, his human, in his humanity, that he might carry it back to us. And he is preparing to come back to us in order to give us that which he gave. Hence, when he returned to his apostles on Easter Sunday, he said, My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, but do I give unto you. 
And there's a love of joy you're going to receive that no man shall take from you. There's going to be a sorrow in this world. <clears throat> and you shall be sorrowful, but the world shall rejoice, he says in the gospel today. You shall be sorrowful, but the world shall rejoice. If we follow Christ, if we maintain the truth, there must be some sorrow. The world rejoices only and rejoices mostly, its greatest rejoicing, in the sorrow of the just. That's the way it has always been. That's the way it shall always be. You shall be sorrowful, but the world shall rejoice. Our sorrow is going to be temporary. The world's rejoicing is going to be very temporary. But we must recognize we're going to be some sorrow if we follow Christ. There's going to be the embracing of the cross required for us. You shall be sorrowful, but the world shall rejoice. And then this sorrow shall be taken from us, and it shall be replaced with a joy that no man can take from us. Remember by our fidelity that there's going to be a person, there's going to be eternal happiness and eternal reward. During this time of struggle, we are to remember the reward. We are to remember that we are going to receive an eternal reward. That there shall be joy given to us that cannot be taken. People are going to be bad. But there will be some that are pillars. And there will be some that wear white garments in the world that has no virtue in it. It is hard to be faithful in marriage when there are no fidelity in marriage in our time. It's hard to be faithful in priesthood when there is no fidelity in priesthood in our times. It's hard to be faithful in work when there's no fidelity in any work in our times. It's our regular responsibility and our job. It is not being done today. But those that remain faithful in their marriages, faithful in their priesthood, faithful in their daily duties, this fidelity shall make the garments white. And they shall stand strong in the time of temptation to the sixth. He says, of Satan, which is the beginning of the sixth age, there shall be a synagogue of Satan. Well, what's going to happen in the synagogue of Satan? The synagogue of Satan shall be, they shall call themselves Jews, but they are not Jews. They lie. They will call themselves Catholics, but they are not Catholics. They lie. Call themselves followers of Christ, but they're not followers of Christ. They lie. And I shall take them and make them bow down before the feet of the just. Now remember, this is going to happen in this life. It's everywhere in the prophecies of sacred scripture, and in the last several hundred years, there will be a bowing down. The synagogue of Satan shall not succeed. The synagogue of Satan shall be made to bow down before the just. And this is the switching of the church from the fifth age of Sardis to the sixth age of Philadelphia. And then there shall come a lukewarmness. And there shall come a, 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 we have all we need. We have been successful. We should become cold and lukewarm. And then this lukewarmness, there shall enter the seventh age before the coming of the Antichrist, where there shall be, where, where, there, where our Lord will say, I would that you are hot or cold in the church of Laodicea. But I, because I was neither hot nor cold, I will begin to vomit you out of my mouth. So we are in the fifth age now, which is the age of great pride. And then, and then and the sixth age would be the age of the victory over the synagogue of Satan. And then in the final age, just before the coming of Christ and the, at the end of the world, there should be a lukewarmness and a collapse of those who were proud in the seventh, sixth age. And then there shall come the Antichrist and the end. The seven ages are spoken of in the sacred scripture today, the book of Apocalypse. And they are a history of the little while between the end of the... The Feast of Ascension, until the day of Pentecost. And remember that every single part of history is contained in the sacred scripture, in divine revelation, and that and, and heaven and earth will pass away, says our Lord Jesus Christ, but my word shall not pass away. Every jot and tittle contained in the prophecy of sacred scripture is going to be fulfilled. So we're now in that time of the transition between the fifth age of the church of Sardis and to the sixth age of the church of Philadelphia. And meanwhile, there's persevering in this church of Sardis, and not everyone says they're good, everyone says they're true, everyone says they're honest, everyone says they're just, but when we say these things, we lie. Remember the publican in the center, and the Pharisee walked into the church to pray, into the temple of God to pray. And the Pharisee said, I thank God I'm not like the rest of men. And this is the false prayer of most souls in the time of our age, the fifth age. That we're not like the rest of men, but rather we must pray like unto the publican, O Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And remember that we are weak sinners, and stand firm. 
by putting our true faith that we have heard and received into true practice even in our difficult times. And then we'll survive for the age of this end of the fifth age and the transition to the sixth age. We are not yet in the time of the Antichrist nor in the time of the transition. And the little while is going to come to an end. The little while in which our Lord goes up to the Heavenly Father and is going to come back. And he's going to give us joy and peace. And this happens to every soul who's faithful to God when they meet Christ at the end of a little while at the time of our death. And now Christ comes and meets them. And he takes away the sorrow that we had for a little while on this earth, which is called the Hell Holy Queen, this veil of tears. The little while this veil of tears shall come to an end. And when we remain faithful, there shall come a great moment in which the Holy Ghost of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, comes down to judge us. And he gives us peace which the world cannot give and which can never be taken from us. Let's live our faith, <coughs> persevere in it in this little while, and which is coming to an end soon, and that uh, the persevere this little while until we arrive at the, at the, at the judgment of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, gets, and a happy Easter to you all, close of that, God bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.